Let me show you what we've got going on before I go home. I am tired. I've had a full day at work, like my regular job. And that's all airplanes. And then I come over here and then this is all airplanes. But this is way more exciting. This is way more exciting. I have a regular job to pay for my hobbies and my passions, which general aviation is definitely one of those. And you know that if you've been on the channel for any amount of time. What I'm about to show you, I'm gonna take a deep breath here because it's, uh, it's a lot. You're gonna see an airplane that's mostly disassembled on the inside. We're doing various avionics work at the same time that we're doing all the upholstery work. So I'm gonna try to combine some of these videos so I'm not dragging it out too long. But welcome back and pray for me because this is a lot happening in one shot. All right, three, two, one. Ugh. Almost looks like we're doing an annual, right? Well, guess what? Since we've already got the airplane mostly disassembled, I think we're just gonna do an annual. So what you're seeing here right now are the floorboards are removed. You're seeing the landing gear um, transmission right there. We did a new gear motor over here at one point. Um, but we've taken out all the floorboards and we're gonna continue taking out the front floorboards here in a little bit because we removed an ADF antenna that was still on the airplane, not gonna use that. And then what's going up here is GTN 750, a GTR 215 or GNC 215. Um, I don't remember what, which one it is. We're gonna reuse the GTX 327. Um, and then it's, we're gonna add a GDL 88 for ADS-B in and out. Now on the left side, it's just gonna have all the original um, avionics, all the round dials until I can afford to put something better on the left side, but it's gonna have a brand new um, panel overlay. The JPI has been sent out for recalibration because it was messing up. Um, and we've pulled a whole bunch of wire out of the airplane. And we're repinning or depinning certain connectors on the back of the Garmin Avionics. We've removed a ton of dead wiring from the airplane. It doesn't look like it, but there's a lot that's been removed that was just hanging out here from decades of upgrades and changes. We've done a little engineering and in the grand scheme of trying to get avionics done, I've created a side panel as well as this, which is a rack for the GDL 88. It's all wrapped up here, I'll open it up. This will eventually go here like so this rack will pass through here and mount there to hold the GDL 88 I think that's self-explanatory enough oh we got one more piece hang on okay we have avionics in work and what I want to do is just hold this up to see how it fits. Looks like it fits fine. That's gonna be flush there. Looks like my mounting holes are lining up, at least on this side. And then I'll match drill this side over here. So that's gonna get screwed into the instrument panel and painted black. And then we have this side yeah, we got this provision for circuit breakers and it gives me enough circuit breakers for future expansion and to clean up the old circuit breakers if I ever decide to. On the back of some of this stuff is already PEM nuts to make mounting even easier. So I'm going to have to rivet the radio rails in place onto this thing. But yeah, very clean. Just wanted to show you what uh, Send Cut Send is able to make. That rack will go back there to hold the GDL 88. 
and it's already got PEM nuts. It's already got hardware inserted so that I can do just an easy job mounting it up. So just wanted to show you that and show you that we're using engineering to make the work a little bit easier and cleaner because I mean look at that. Looks like a professional part. Overhead, there's no headliner because we've pulled that out to get to various antennas and I'm gonna try to reupholster the headliner myself. Back here, we have a new WAS capable GPS antenna. It's already bolted down. A new RG400 cable has been run to this unit and I'm eventually gonna have to put a little silicone around it to seal it from the elements and keep the wind from getting under it. Fear that out aerodynamically. So that's work to be done. We are keeping the one of the flying V antennas. This is the old Narco antenna. This is the VOR slash ILS antenna. Um, up front there, we're keeping that antenna as well. That is a comment uh, antenna for COM1. And we are adding somewhere on the bottom this blade antenna um, that will be for the GDL88 for ADSB in and uh, ADSB out. So, lots going on. It's a lot of work. All the trays are wired up. That's what you're seeing there. Simon's done a great job of wiring those up on the bench, and he's left me a list of things to clean up um, over the next few days. But this is a huge project, and it's really just two of us working on this project after hours whenever we get time. But I'm using technology to make all the instrumentation up there a little bit easier to do. And while the floorboards are up, I'm actually scanning, 3D scanning the floorboards, so maybe I can make new floorboards out of aluminum or some sort of composite. Um, they'll be the same weight, but easier to service and easier to maintain. Uh, might use a, a company like Send Cut Send for that. And then, of course, the upholstery is still in work. It doesn't make sense putting it all back together until all the wires are run or removed. And so the upholstery is on pause right now until I get all of that stuff done. So it's a lot. It is a lot. What that means is I won't be flying the airplane for another couple weeks. And that's okay, because I got another airplane. If I really need to go flying, I can just hop in that one and take off and spend money, even though this one is down. So we're gonna do a full annual. Check the timing, compressions, gear swings, um, balance the prop, all the things that need to be done on an annual. Check the gear tensions uh, and spacing, um, clean up the spark plugs, all of that stuff. Um, and then get it all put back together. So this is gonna be a long, long, long project. It's one of those while you're in there projects, but it makes sense, right? The annual for this airplane is due in December, which is just a few months away. By the time this upholstery and avionics upgrade is complete, it'll be the end of September, October, November, December, right? So we're close enough to where an annual right now makes sense. Reset the clock. I get into instrument training or flying. Um, I can start getting some hours in the arrow, but then get familiar with the new systems. This is gonna be the airplane I'm flying, so I wanna do my training in this airplane. Um, am I crazy? Yes. You knew that if you've been on the channel for any amount of time. Is this the right thing to do? Yeah. We're gonna add lightness, which is great. We're gonna remove weight from the airplane from some of these dead items that, that have been in the airplane. I've got a Garmin GNS 530 that I'll sell. It's already hooked up and coded for a Stormscope WX500. That I'll sell as well. I don't know if I'll get buyers for any of that stuff, but that'll help finance some of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, there's an old Narco 12D there that um, it works, but some of the buttons are starting to get gummy, so I'll probably sell those, sell that for parts. Um, I think I got a CDI back there, uh, 106 Alpha, 106A. I'll probably put that up for sale. And yeah, and, and then keep just 
keep doing what we can do. But we're adding lightness, we're simplifying the wiring, we're checking the wiring, we're checking the whole structure of the airplane, as much metal as we can take a look at, adding uh, corrosion inhibiting sprays and coverings as we go along, and then getting the airplane ready for a very long, healthy, capable life. The GTN 750 was not cheap, um, but it's what this airplane deserves for the kind of flying that I want to do with this airplane, the training that I want to do with this airplane. The fact that we can do some of this stuff ourselves is a huge bonus. Um, the 750 uh, came with the paperwork, even though it's a used unit, came with an 8130 form, which essentially says that it's been checked out by an authorized repair station, even though it's a used unit. Um, it has the appropriate paper trail. And then the other stuff, the comm that I'm putting in there is um, brand new. Um, so it's, you know, it's a lot. And of course, I'm trying to give you as much value as I possibly can because you're probably also thinking about doing something like this with your small old airplane. And you're on the fence, right? You're, you know, do I send my kids to college or do I upgrade my airplane? Well, there's no guarantee that your kids are gonna love you forever, but your airplane will if you keep it in good shape. So there's my argument. But on top of that, add safety, add simplicity, add lightness, add modern touches so that you are getting the best out of these machines that you possibly can. It's a sacrifice, of course. Um, if I were to give you a piece of advice, if you're looking for an airplane, you probably want to buy one with the work already done. Buy a reputable or a known A&P or some good shop. Um, or get a pre-buy done to prove to yourself that the airplane was properly maintained and properly upgraded. Uh, but it makes a lot more sense to do, to buy the airplane with the configuration that you already want. Buy it with the avionics that you want, unless you're an A&P or one of your partners in the airplane is an A&P, and then labor becomes less of an issue. The cost of parts are the cost of parts buy used where you can to save a little bit of money, but then you just keep um, you just keep going, right? So that's where we're at. I, I am in fact tired. Uh, it's now I think 8 p.m. Um, and it's been a long day. Ranting, but I just want to catch up with each and every single one of you. Uh, a lot of you are going to comment down in the bottom here. You're going to say, yeah, this is scope creep. and you fell for the trick of thinking you were only going to do the upholstery. I knew I was going to do all this anyway. Um, I just didn't know we'd be available to do it right now. So it made perfect sense. Uh, the GTN 750 has been sitting on the shelf for months. I wasn't married at the time when I bought it. So that's how I got away with doing that. Right now I think I'd, I'd be... Uh, I'd be yelled at, let's just put it that way, if I were to spend money on a GTN 750 for all the other things that we're trying to save for in life, like a house and um, you know all this other stuff. Um, but you can do this stuff too. It's, 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 it's a lot of work, it's scary, it puts the airplane down for a little while, but um, take this as your sign that you can do things, cool things with small airplanes too. Now, the upholstery is coming together, it's looking pretty good. I've already dry fit most of it already. The seats, I actually have the two front seats done. I'm gonna splice in some of this content, some of these videos as we go along. The uh, only piece that I haven't tested is the um, upholstery piece that's by the pilot's left arm. It's where the ignition switch is, just under the pilot's storm window. Uh, but now that I have the avionics all pulled out, now I can go in and dry fit that to make sure that it makes sense. But everything has fit from Generation Global. Everything has fit. Um, over here on the co-pilot side, there is a piece of upholstery that has a little bit of a gap between the, the front and the back. It's maybe a, an inch of a gap, but because the seat goes there, you won't see it. So I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm gonna send them notes and um, they're gonna adjust it for the next person, I'm sure. Um, the headliner, I'm gonna have to remove the old material, clean off the old adhesive, 
and then stick the new material onto it, wrap it around the back so it looks nice and clean. And then once the terminals, once the connectors are put on the back of these antennas, I'll put the headliner back into place. Um, I want to check for leaks before we do that. So I'll probably end up closing up all the windows, getting a large jug of water, and pouring it over the top of the airplane and checking for, to see where I find leaks on the airplane. And hopefully it's not under the headliner. Um, I don't want to put a new headliner in and just have to rip it back out to solve a, leaky, a leaking, leaking problem. What other cool things can I tell you? Um, I, 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 think, I think that's it for now. I think you realize that I'm just out here having a little bit of fun and trying to take you along on the journey and you know really just hope that you you talk back because I'm just a guy talking to an audience trying to convince them to like my content hopefully you do all right click, click like hit subscribe um, let me go home to my family who's probably missing me right now all right thanks for tuning in I'll talk to you next time